I can see a host of people. There's a great cloud of witnesses, and they've already won the race. While I'm down here running strong, I can hear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I wonder if we can stand. Hallelujah. Let's just raise our hands. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. You just need to let go of all the worries of the day and everything that you've already had this week, just let it go. You're coming to this place of worship, and all you have to do is just lay it down at His feet. That's all you have to do, and He will just take you, and He will hold you in His arms, and He'll give you strength. He'll give you peace. There's nothing like the presence of God. Come on, lift your voice to him. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we lift you up. You're the king of glory. Hallelujah, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, come on, worship him. Worship him. Whatever you need, all you have to do is come here. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And Bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. I just want. 
just want to be with you.
For the past. 
Hallelujah. Come on, that's all right. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you believe the words of that song, why don't you lift your hands up? Hallelujah. And give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Declare it. I'm going to see a victory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I believe it, God. I believe your word, Father. I believe what you say. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the battle is yours, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, you're so worthy, God. Oh, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, time and time again in the scripture, the people of God were facing hopeless situations and they didn't know where to turn. And so they turned to God and he said, don't fear the battle is not yours, it's mine. And he delivered them. And I'm looking out across the people in this room that have faced hopeless situations time and time again, only for us to turn to God and for him to say, don't worry about it. The battle is not yours, it's mine. And if God has brought us through everything up to this point, then I think that the things that we're all facing right now and that we will face in the future, we're going to see a victory, amen? Amen. If you believe that God will give you the victory in your current situation and that God will give you the victory in the future, why don't you clap your hands? Hallelujah, Jesus. See the Lord. Then it feel good in the house tonight. Amen. If you are a man or a boy, would you please say men's conference? Men's conference. Amen. This Friday night at 7 p.m., we will begin our first men's conference here at Carville First Pentecostal Church. Amen. We are going to have Brother Caleb Herring and Brother Gordon Poe as our guest ministers with us this weekend, they will be with us ministering Friday night at 7 p.m., Saturday morning, breakfast at 8.30. We're going to begin our morning sessions at 9.30. Amen. I'm looking forward to a great time in the Lord. Brother Gordon Poe will also be staying over with us to minister on Sunday as well. So for those of you who are not able to be a part of men's conference, ladies, you will still get to enjoy the ministry of Brother Gordon Poe on Sunday. Praise the Lord. So if you are going to be there, men, say amen. 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 That sounds like a good commitment, so I'm holding you to that. We'll see you Friday night. Amen. It is time for us to take up our Wednesday night tithe and offering. Amen. If you would prepare that. The Bible says to give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name and to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. So part of giving the Lord glory due his name is giving to the Lord what he has already blessed us with and dedicating it back to him and to his kingdom because he can take it and he can do way more with it than we ever could. Amen. So if you will be a cheerful giver tonight, we will come and bring our offering after we pray and we will drop it in the baskets and we will continue to worship and praise and give God glory and give with a smile on your face. Amen. Because God loves a cheerful giver. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for what we're feeling in this place. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. Lord, we know that you're going to minister to us tonight through the speaker, oh God. We pray that you would anoint him, oh Lord, Lord Jesus, that you would speak through him exactly what we need to hear and what he needs to say, oh God. Lord, we pray that you would bless us. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit and in tune with you, Father. Lord, let your offering, oh God, that we are giving you be multiplied for your kingdom, for your glory, for your purpose. Use it, oh God, to further your kingdom and to bless this, this kingdom, oh God, that you have, oh Lord. We, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. If you would bring your offering from all sides, remember to bring it smiling and be cheerful. If somebody is sitting down in the aisle next to you, encourage them to bring it. If you don't have anything, come and touch the basket and say, Jesus, bless it. Restored exceeding joy Your grace fell like the rain And made this desert live Your light broke through my night Restored exceeding joy Your grace fell like the rain And made this desert
for that we just begin to worship him come on give him praise for turning your sorrow into joy hallelujah come on let's give it up for the lord tonight thank you jesus we worship you lord we magnify you we thank you for being here in this place right now lord lord let the holy ghost minister across this room tonight in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah come on somebody try it say hallelujah Hallelujah. Did you feel the joy when you say hallelujah? It's a joy when you begin to praise the Lord and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just something comes inside of you like a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to the great I am. Praise God. Praise God. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh. I feel like the prophet. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't contain it. When God's people begin to praise and send them up to God, he sends the glory back down. Woo! I don't know, See, glory to God. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this house. Oh, I don't want to be like the one, one fella said, and I knew it not. But I want to be able to know when I feel the presence of the Lord. And he's in this house tonight. Praise God. How many is ready for some preaching tonight? I think we got smaller classes are going, but teenagers are staying in here tonight. Brother Dale Rios, I want you to come and preach to us. Tonight. I'm so excited to hear from him. Have not heard from him in a while. But how many wants God to preach to you? I want you to reach your hands to him, and I want you to say, God anointed him, Brother Rios, like you never have before. In the name of Jesus, use this man of God tonight, God. Let the word of God go forth. We're going to count on you, God, to preach to us. Let us hear what your word says tonight. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Man, my body's still shaking from that worship just now. Man, give, it, give Brother Brett a hand, please. And Sister Brummett. Boy, if she can't get you going, nobody's going to get you going. I want you guys to go to Deuteronomy 31 and 6 and say amen when you're ready. Uh, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. We'll go to Ephesians 4.29, and this one hits me every time I read it, every time I speak it out loud. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace into the hearers. And that's what Pastor Hunt does to us every Wednesday and Sunday. He feeds us with God's word. In Jesus' name. Psalms 37 and 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And I'm going to preach today just for a few moments. I know it's a Wednesday night. Some of us worked. And the name of it is going to be Faith with a Positive Attitude. Faith with a positive attitude. Pastor, if you can pray for this right now, please. Lord, 
Amen. You guys can be seated. Things don't always go as they are planned. I'm pretty sure when God's people fled Egypt for the promised land, the last thing they wanted was to be chased in the desert by an angry Pharaoh. You see, he had changed his mind. And now he was even more angry. He wanted vengeance for his son being lost and him losing his slave. So the people of Israel were frightened. They were terrified. They knew that when Pharaoh got to them, who knows, they would either be tortured, killed, and they were just, they didn't know what to do. They ran and went to Moses and said, why, why would you do this to us? Why would you do this to us? We could have just stayed in Egypt and died. We, we got to die out here in the desert. Moses assured them not to worry. But as far as they knew, their attitude was, it, it was negative. It was bad. It was down. They knew they were going to die. Okay, they were at the Red Sea, and they knew they couldn't cross the Red Sea, and they had an angry pharaoh right behind them. But they didn't know that God was looking down at them. And you can take their name out of it and put your name in. Because each and every single one of us has been in a situation where we were frightened. We didn't know what to do. We were standing right there at the Red Sea with an angry Pharaoh chasing right behind us. We had no options. We had no resort. We had no one to turn to but God. See, we were terrified, but we got to remember that this life is always going to have our ups and downs. We just have to stay close to God to be able to tackle it positively. See, and, and, and this hits me all the time. A lot of times you got people to say, okay, well, I found God. Well, let me tell you something. God's found you. Okay, God's mercy has found you. Each and every one of us were making our way straight to hell before God's mercy found us, before God's love found us. I want to go to Numbers 13, 25 to 30. Let me reach in here. All right, Numbers 13, 25 to 30. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all of the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and it surely floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jesuits and the Amorites dwell in the mountains of the Canaanites, dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. Now, when they mention these people from Anak, those are so-called giants. Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, in the Bible it said one of them name was Goliath, and he was like nine feet tall. So they felt like little, I guess, little crickets, little caterpillars next to them. And the last verse here, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. So Moses gathered these 12 spies, and what they went out to do was to scout the land, to, to, uh, to, to see if this was the land that they had hoped for. Well, 
there's two points that we want to look at. Point well, number one was, yes, it was that promised land. It was a vast, beautiful country with everything they had hoped for, everything. I mean, it, uh, there was one, uh, one thing that I read in the Bible that in that land, they had picked up a cluster of grapes. And it took two men to carry those, that cluster of grapes. And, I mean, it was just hanging on the ground while they carried it. So think about it. If these grapes were this big, can you imagine what the bananas and the mangoes look, look like? I mean, I mean it, could, it could feed them all. But the word nevertheless came. The word nevertheless is a dangerous word because when you use the word nevertheless, it's about to cancel out what you said right before that. We use the word but. Okay? Like, uh, I'm sorry, but. That's, a neg that's negativity right there. Okay? So now, so you got two, you got two sides. You got ten spies that said, we can't do it. The land is beautiful. They got all the fruit, all the food we want. Nevertheless, but we can't conquer it. There's giants there. There's large walls. There's, there's people that, that are much stronger than us. But then you get the other two, which was Caleb and Joshua, and they spoke up and said, no, 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 no. Don't listen to those ten naysayers. We can do this. We got this. Now, here's my, my question. I can't understand how two guys can say we can do this and the ten guys, which were the naysayers, with the negative attitude, says they couldn't. I'm sure they were all there when the Lord split the Red Sea. They knew who was behind it. They knew who was with them. But the negativity took over. So when you had the ten naysayers, which had the negative attitude, and then you had the two with the positive attitude, who do you think God blessed? He blessed the two with the positive attitude. The ten naysayers, God said, would not get to the promised land for having the negative attitude. Now, furthermore, anybody that aligned themselves with these ten naysayers would never make it to the promised land either. So that's what negativity or, or negative attitude will bring us. But let's, let, let's go deeper into a negative attitude. Now, I'm sure no one here struggles with a negative attitude. But just in case, you get tempted to have one. Or maybe it's cross your mind. Let me just wear you out right now. God's people should never have a negative attitude. But let's be honest. We live in a world now that's constantly trying to break you down. All right? And we're flesh and flesh is weak. So we get caught up or we can get caught up in it. I mean... Don't do it now. But when, when I'm done here, go ahead and look at your phone, your, 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 your news app, and see the negative headlines that are going on. You'll see about 20 negative headlines before you see one, positive one. But by the time you get to that positive one, you're so exhausted from reading all the negative, it really doesn't mean much. Now, because we're carnal by nature, we can get caught up in that. All right? How many times have you heard this? Hey, did you hear such and such? 
got a new car. Oh, okay. Now, did you hear, did you hear such and such? She wrecked her car. Oh, where did it happen? When? Who? Is she okay? Because we, we feed our negativity. Oh, we can feed our negativity. Negativity can consume us. We got to be careful because wherever there's negativity, there's Satan. Satan dwells wherever there's negativity. And believe me, he's, he's sticking that knife that much deeper and deeper. You want to align yourself with the devil, go ahead and start talking negative. Things like, well, things never work out for me. You know, things are bad out there and they're getting worse. You know, if I bought a, a turkey farm, they'd outlaw Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, this is a true, true story. You know, negativity can come in uh, various different ways. You can just be a negative person by nature. You can just wake up in the morning and not feel good. But negativity comes in a lot of different ways. It's really up to you to be able to control that. That's why we have to stay close to God. That's why we have to pray. That's why we have to stay in the Bible. Okay? And don't miss church, whatever you do. Don't miss church. You know... I, you know, I, so, I, I, I struggled with a negative attitude myself. Or, um, I, I, when you have a negative attitude, God can deal with you in different ways, and he can put you in your place. I'm going to tell you right now, he will put you in your place. I'll tell you what. Matter of fact, the Holy Ghost just gave this to me. Uh, a few years ago, Pastor remembers this, I had heart trouble. All right, it was my own doing. All right, I was I was I had already had heart trouble, and uh, I wasn't listening to the doctors. All right, I had a negative attitude. Uh, they had told me, "Listen, you got to lose some weight. Uh, you can't be walking around with at the weight that you're doing." And uh, they fixed me. They put a stint in me, and uh, I was I was fine. I thought to myself, oh, "I'm good. I'm physical. I'm physically all right. I'm going back to doing what I was doing, working out, eating eight ten thousand calories a day." And taking whatever anabolic steroids I can get my hands on. All right. Um, and of course, God was dealing with me at the time because I was in the old church. And uh, God was already giving me messages about changing my life and pretty much giving me, giving me ideas in my head that He was going to use me. But I was stubborn, negative, and didn't want to listen. But so I started having heart trouble again, and my doctor, my cardiologist, called for a stress test. And uh, during the stress test, and they, for any of you guys that don't know what a stress test is, they put you on the treadmill, they put a whole bunch of wires on you, and they make you run till your tongue is hanging down to your waist. It's absolutely horrifying. But my heart, because I was, I was an... I'm an athlete, and I was in shape. They couldn't bring my heart rate up to where they needed it to be. So they kept raising the level of the treadmill. And uh, it felt like I was running up the wall. <laughs> now, here I am going up the wall. Now, all of a sudden, I start feeling a pain in my chest, and I start feeling a pain in my back as well. And I turned to the nurse and said, I'm starting to feel a pain in my back and my chest. Well, I'm trying to talk because I, I, I was running 100 miles an hour, so I was trying to get it out one letter at a time, you know. So she puts it down. She puts the treadmill down and starts to slow it up. She goes, how do you feel now? I said, "Just it's terrible. The pain, she goes, from a 1 to 10, what's the pain level? I said, 12. And she said, really? I said, yeah, it feels like there's a screwdriver being shoved into my, into my chest. Well, I was actually having a heart attack 
during the stress test, okay? So they didn't know I was having a heart attack. I just complained about chest, you know, pain in my chest or pain in my back. Anyway, they gave me what you call a nitroglycerin right away, put it under my tongue, which opens up your arteries and your veins. I started feeling better. I'm standing there going, oh, okay. How are you feeling, Mr. Rios? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better. She goes, all right, well, Dr. Antoine said you can't leave. I said, what do you mean I can't leave? I'm good. I feel better. You gave me that, that tablet, and I feel better. Now, you got to understand, back then, you know, I was much bigger, but I was a little bit more intimidating, too, and my attitude wasn't so nice. So here's the nurse standing here. There's another, another nurse standing right over there, and then there's one where, where Pastor is. And I said, no, you don't understand. My car is downstairs, and I'm going to go down to my car, and I'm driving back home. Actually, back to work because I was feeling good. I was feeling fine. This nurse tells me again, no, 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 you can't not leave. Dr. Antoine says, you can't leave. And I said, what are you talking about? She goes, you got a heart situation happening right now. You're a heart patient. And I looked at it, I said, whoa, I'm not a heart patient. What are you talking about? I'm an athlete. You can't have a heart problem and look like me. There's absolutely no way. So I don't know what you're talking about. I'm getting ready to leave. So she's backing up because I'm a pretty big guy. I got a tight T-shirt on, you know. This lady right here is just looking at me like, oh, how are you going to do that? This lady over here who's about 10 feet away, she goes, well, don't worry about it, guys. I'm calling, her, I'm calling his wife. And I said, oh, like I said, I'm not going nowhere. You know, that, that's when you start backpedaling. You start backpedaling. See, y'all don't, don't need to scare me like that. I'm a heart patient. <laughs> don't be. Okay. Holy Ghost filled people should always have a positive attitude. Okay. We should always look at the good things in life. We should always know that God will never leave us, never forsake us, that He's with us always. We need to know that we have a bright future as long as God is in our life. We got to look at the future of the rapture of the church. We got to know that we're working on our place in heaven where we're going to spend our eternal life. That's a positive attitude. Hey, when things aren't going good that day, don't get negative. How'd you say, it, Pastor? My foot hurts. Hallelujah, anyway. Something wrong at your job? Hallelujah anyway. You got a headache? Hallelujah anyway. Right? You wake up in the morning, your back hurts, your leg hurts, you got something in your eye? Hallelujah anyway because you woke up that morning. Why don't we give God a shot of praise? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to tell you guys something. I love reading the Bible and I love reading the stories about Abraham, Goliath, Joshua, and Caleb. But I'm going to tell you something. I really believe in my heart that God has me speak through experiences that I've had to go through in my life. And every day God confirms to me that he made the right decision by using me. I'm going to read, I'm going to read a text that was sent, that I asked my wife to send me. And it was about her uncle who was admitted to the hospital. And again, this is God confirming to us always that he's never going to leave us. He's always going to be there. At your darkest moment, at your darkest, darkest vision, he'll always be there. So Marsha, my wife's uncle, Billy Bray, had been admitted 
to the hospital January 30th. And, he, you know, they, he had COVID, but he had, another, he had another heart situation going on. They admitted him, and the doctors assured that he had a good chance of survival and that he may be okay. Of course, you know, my wife's whole family grew up apostolic, and those are the biggest team of prayer warriors. I'm telling you right now, no demons want to go up against them. The devil surely doesn't want to hear them because they will get to praying, and, and it's, it's, it's a hallelujah party. And they believed that God would work a complete healing in him. So February 14th, things weren't really going his way. He had to be put on a ventilator. And uh, he was in a coma. He opened his eyes but wasn't really responsive to, to anything. He would just open his eyes and... It was like nothing was there. It was empty. Our Billy Bray's wife, Pam, was sitting in his room, and a doctor walked in. He walked into the room, the first words out of his mouth, without an introduction, and I'm going to drop his name because it's public domain. His name is Dr. Saeed. But the first thing that came out of Dr. Saeed's mouth was, I understand that you and your family are very religious and they are very, uh, a very big praying family. Proudly, Pam responded, thinking that he as well was Christian and, and prayed a lot. Yes, sir, we are. He gazed back at her and said, you are being you are being very anti-Christian, and God is not happy with you for praying. There is nothing there pointing to Billy while he was on the vent and in a coma. I look, Pam looked at him and responded and says, you don't know that. He replied, I know that you just don't. I assured, and Pam, Pam's response was, I assured him, I know a God that still performs miracles. Yes. He responded, maybe one in a million. You get in here, Pam still has that positive attitude because her faith is powerful. This Dr. Saeed had a very negative attitude. Now he asked Pam, had Billy looked at her? Or opened his eyes. She said, I think so. He replied by saying, there's nothing there. He said, this machine is all you have. We can keep him like this as long as you want. If you want me to turn it off and show you. Pam responded by saying, no, sir, I do not. But if the Lord wants to take him home, you have no machine that can stop him. The doctor responded by saying, I guess you feel like a dark cloud has entered the room. She said, yes, I do, and I have nothing more to say to you. He turned and walked out, and the nurse that was standing there said, I have always heard a drop of honey goes much further than a gallon of vinegar, and you just got the whole gallon poured on top of you. Still believing for a miracle and watching it happen. And this was... Four, four or five weeks ago. Today, Billy Bray is off the ventilator. He's woken up. And tomorrow they start some type of breathing, breathing, breathing treatment to make sure. Now, another perfect example of a positive attitude and a negative attitude. Pam Bray had a positive attitude, and she had faith that God was going to pull through, and he's pulling through. Dr. Saeed was negative, and I guess uh, he's not looking too, uh, pretty good right now because he, 
He, he wrote Billy off. So I got a message for Dr. Saeed. Brother, get thee behind me. Because as far as I'm concerned, God's got this. You are a physician, yes, but we serve the great physician. When God's got it, guys, when God's got this, you're always going to make it. Right? You keep the faith. The faith is stronger than any medicine. Faith is stronger than any surgery. Let's give God a hand of praise. Pastor, I'm closing, but I want you, I, I love when you come behind me and give us your thoughts on what you just heard. I love it. Appreciate you guys. Th thank you. The music, come on tonight. What a, what a word tonight. How many believes we can work on our attitude tonight? How many believes you can work on your attitude? We're not talking about the person across the aisle from you. But my attitude needs to be adjusted tonight. God, I want to be better. I don't want to always have to look at the, the worst part of everything. Because every, everything has a bad part. But you know what? I, I like what Don Johnson sang the song. He said, all the good things outweigh all the bad things. My God, if you'll just think on him all the time. Well, how good would this world be if we just think on God? Somebody told me one time, Brother uh, Norris, they says, well, I think you ought to look at the, the terrible stuff so you know what you're dealing with. Well, friend, I don't have time because I'm so busy looking at God's stuff and how God brings me through, how God ministers to me, how God has brought me into this area. God keeps me. Praise the Lord. You see, I don't know about you, Brother Ratliff, but God leads me. God directs me. All that other stuff, if, if I begin to look at it and focus on it, then I miss my lead. So I want God to lead me. How many here tonight wants God to lead you? That's the one you need to be directed on. Don't do like Peter did and begin to look at all the negative stuff, all the wind and the wave and, and all the stuff flying around him. But he took his eyes off the positive thing, which was Jesus Christ. I, I come today to tell you when you take your eyes off the positive thing, which is Jesus Christ, you will begin to sink. You will begin to sink. You may not backslide one night, but you will see yourself begin to sink when you take your eyes off the positive reward. Praise God. But I want to tell you tonight, the positive reward is in this house. Can somebody tell me his name? Jesus is in this house tonight. Thank you, Brother Rios, for the word. But I want us to come to the front tonight, and I want us to ask God, Lord, help me with my attitude. Help me to be the person that you have called me to be. Would you come and pray at this altar tonight, God, to keep you focused on the right way, the positive things of life, that you can see his kingdom one day when he comes. Come on. Let's worship and pray at this altar a few minutes tonight as Brother Brent sings. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap one more time. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Dale. That was awesome word tonight. Remind us to keep that positive. That's how we keep going, church, just keep positive. Just know there's a positive side to everything. There's a, a negative and positive takes it to run. I understand. But without the positive, there's no power at all. Praise the Lord. So keep that positive plugged up and keep it going in the name of Jesus. All right, I got to do something before we close. Uh, it was requested for me to do this, and I don't want to let our youth our youth down. But they said there was somebody here in the room tonight that's got a birthday Friday night, and they want me to call them to the to the carpet and sing happy birthday to them. Do I need to call your name, or you just walk on up here tonight? Okay, Hayden Ratliff, come on up. It's your birthday Friday, and you get to wear the crown tonight. Is she turning 13, Daddy? Oh, my goodness. Let's give her the crown tonight. She gets to be the Burger King person. Praise the Lord. Let's sing happy birthday, Brother Brent. However you got it there, Brother, sing it for me. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy Can't birthday hear you, youth department. to you. Happy birthday, dear Hayden. Happy birthday to you. Can you do this? <laughs> Happy birthday. So... All right, our youth are picking on each other, getting that song. But we love our youth department. Thank you, youth, for standing here. Let's give all of our youth a hand. All you young people tonight, thank you for being a part of Cardiville Church. You are a part of our church. We're so glad you are. Let's don't forget about Friday night, 7 o'clock. We're going to have two speakers, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to have some praise singing. All the men will be praise singing. The men will be preaching. It's going to be a lot of men stuff going on this weekend. Every husband in here, you need this. If you don't have the $25 that we're, we're asking for registration, please don't let that bother you. Come on anyway. You can just give any offering a dollar or two if you want to. If you'd rather give it that way, that's fine. Either way, we're just going to have a good time. If you don't have anything, I want you to come anyway. Saturday is going to be awesome. Uh, make sure you're here. we got somebody supplying, bringing all the donuts for us. That's going to be awesome. And coffee is going to be available Saturday morning. So come expecting a great time. And then Sunday, everybody say Sunday. We're going to have a place of revival because the men's going to come back in here fired up with the Holy Ghost and going to out-worship the women this coming Sunday. Every man's going to out-worship the women Sunday. Praise God. So we're going to challenge you women. Amen. Sunday in worship. All right. God bless you. We love you. Shake hands and be friendly. We'll see everybody Friday night at 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Sorry.